Greetings, everyone. As you know, intellectual property is a type of intangible personal property. What I'm going to talk about in this session is copyright law and what it means. So a copyright is a protection of expression of an idea through artistry and creativity. The copyright has to do with the, what rights the creator has to control the use of that creation. The, on this slide, you see the copyright symbol, all rights reserved. Um, you can add a year, but as you will see as we go along, um, it's no longer required that you indicate that it's copyrighted material, although it's always a good idea just to let others who read it know. A copyright is a protection of expression of ideas. Now, um, when I talked about in the intro about what intellectual property is in general, intellectual property in general is that the law provides protection for how ideas are expressed with human creativity. In the case of a patent, that protects the invention in the case of a copyright, it protects the creative or artistic expression of an idea. In the case of a trademark, it prote protects the symbol or word that someone uses to uh, demonstrate that a product is produced by a certain company or to show that what its origin is, because if it's not a company, it might be a country that is the origin, that's what the trademark symbolizes, um, and a trade secret um, symbolizes a non-disclosed private process that a business has that it believes gives it a competitive advantage. So copyright then protects the creative expression of an idea. So what are the elements? It uh, protects expression of ideas as original works of authorship in tangible form, but not the actual ideas. Intellectual property can't protect ideas. It only protects the expression of those ideas uh, in a creative way. So, for example, motion pictures and other audiovisual works are protected under copyright. Pictorial, graphic, and sculptural works are protected under copyright sound recordings. So if you like music, which I do, those sound recordings are protected by copyright unless the holder of the copyright chooses otherwise. Pantomimes and choreographic works are protected. Literary works, books, web pages, those kinds of literary works are protected. Musical works and sound recordings and musical works are some, some of the same things, although you can have a sound recording like this one, which is, um, you know, my, you hear my voice, that can be protected, and it's not music, because you really don't want me to sing. And then architectural works are protected under copyright law. So what, is, what rights does a copyright holder have? The rights include the right to perform or public publicly display the work, the right to make derivative works from it. So you write a, <clears throat> excuse me, you write a book and then you take a chapter of that book and you make changes to it. You have the right to do that. And the other person who didn't create it doesn't. The right to transfer or retain ownership. You create the book, you create the song, you sell the song to um, a music company and that music company now owns it because you sold it. Now you might sold it, sell it for royalties, right? But the music company now owns it and that music company might sell it to a movie so that they use it in a movie, etc. And you have the right to transfer it or you have the right to retain ownership and say, um, I might sell you part of the rights to this song. I'll sell you 10%, but the rest of it I own and I want to control. You have the right to distribute copies as the copyright holder. And you have the right to reprodu reproduce the work. Those are all very essential 
rights that a copyright holder has. Um, earlier I had talked about uh, ownership of property and what that means under the law. This is an example of what that means under the law, those rights that you have as the creator of the copyrighted work. So what is infringement? Infringement is substantial similarities between your work and someone else's work. In order to show infringement, you do have to show access to the work, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an intentional um, infringement or intentional similarity. Um, the picture that is on the slide, although you can't see it all together, is a picture of twins. But they don't look exactly li alike, but they're substantially similar. Um, they look alike facially, but for example, they're dressed a little differently. And so that's to illustrate that um, there needs to be substantial similarities. It doesn't have to be identical. But also you have to show access to the work. So for example, in the movie industry, almost no um, movie production companies accept unsolicited manuscripts. And part of that is because if they accept it and then they produce something that's substantially similar to it, that creator can show access to the work and therefore um, there can be liability for infringing on the copyright. One example of that, um, I believe it was Paramount, but I'm not sure of the studio, um, a writer, Art, Art Buchwald, had submitted a script that was uh, about a king who came from Africa to the U.S. And you may uh, remember part of that plot that was uh, Coming to America. Um, Paramount produced a movie called Coming to America, and I forget the name of the script that Art Buchwald had sent to them, but it was so similar, the script was so similar to the ultimate Coming to America that Buchwald sued and won on the idea that there were substantial similarities, there was access, and um, so Paramount had to pay for infringing on his copyright. So which is not a right of a copyright holder? The right to publicly perform, create a deriv derivative work, to protect only if the copyright symbol is used, to distribute copies, to transfer ownership. And I'll give you about 10 seconds to um, select the correct answer. The correct answer, hopefully you got this, is to protect only if the copyright symbol is used. That is uh, not a right of a copyright holder. In fact, the copyright is protected even if you don't use the copyright symbol. Although we recommend that you use this copyright symbol because then that's a very visual, um, very visual evidence that you have a copyright on something. But uh, as part of signing the Bern Convention on Treat on a Bern Convention, which was a treaty on copyright law, um, we, the U.S., agreed that the copyright symbol would no longer be required. Um, there is a defense, and that's what this picture is, of someone defending in a football game. The fair use defense is probably the most common. Along with that is the parody defense. And a parody is where you make fun of something, and in order to make fun of the something, or in order to show what you're making fun of, you have to use part of what you're making fun of. The um, classic uh, example of that is the um, Pretty Woman case that went to the U.S. Supreme Court. In that case, um, you may remember the song Pretty Woman. I won't attempt to sing it. You might not like it if I do. <laughs> um, but it was a song by Roy Orbison um, that was used for the movie Pretty Woman. And uh, um, a group, a rap group, Two Live Crew, decided to make fun of that song. Um, and in making fun of it, what they did was to uh, use that 
um, the bass line of um, Pretty Woman. And then, of course, in the chorus, they say Pretty Woman, walking down the street, Pretty Woman, etc. And Roy Orbison didn't like Two Live Crew's version of Pretty Woman, so decided to sue for copyright infringement. Now, again, this was a parody, which in some ways you can argue is also a fair use. Um, that parody went to the Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court uh, ruled in favor of Two Live Crew. The U.S. Supreme Court said, well, if you're going to parody something, you do have to use enough of it so that the public recognizes what you're making fun of. Um, you can't copy everything exactly, but what the group copied was the chorus and the major riff of the song, and that was just enough to show people what they were making fun of. So they did not, uh, they, Roy Orbison and uh, the music company that had the rights to the song, did not prevail. It's a really interesting case. Um, and if you want to listen to it, you can go to the copyright website. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. I believe it's the Benedict copyright website. And you can see that song along with other examples of copyright infringement. Um, the other issue is, uh, or other defense to infringement is fair use. In addition to parody, also for news commentary and things like that, um, fair use includes what we do as instructors and as students when we use copyrighted material. If you'll notice with the slides, um, I use photos from various people and I've used a program that um, gets copyright permission for those photos. If you look at the bottom of every slide just about where there's a picture or something, then you will see the um, copyright information. This, for example, this page with the football players is uh, based on a Creative Commons license. It's a non-commercial share-alike license um, by the photographer. And um, I typically create my works as under Creative Commons so that people can use it. I like attribution, but other than that, they can use it as long as it's a non-commercial use. And uh, fair use can be very complicated um, for instructors. Otherwise, you need to get copyright permission to use copyrighted material. So what are the remedies? Uh, the remedies for uh, infringing on a copyright include an injunction, impounding and ins destruction of whatever's been infringed, uh, payment of damages, the plaintiff gets to choose actual damages or statutory damages. There can also be criminal penalties including fine and imprisonment. If you've ever um, watched a movie, for example, through uh, either Netflix or you go to a store and rent or buy a DVD, which um, is not so common anymore, you will uh, see the copyright warning. And it mentions that there could be criminal penalties, including fines or imprisonment. Um, there can also be lawsuits filed against you for, uh, to stop you from doing it, which is what the injunction is. Um, those are all remedies that are available to the copyright holder. I mentioned the Berne Convention earlier as um, a convention that eliminated the requirement that you post a statement that a material is copyrighted. It's just when it's produced in tangible form, it's considered copyrighted. Uh, the Berne Convention has mutual reciprocity. What we've copyrighted here is copyrighted in the copyright is recognized in other countries. You don't need the symbol. Of course, you have different countries who have different rules on enforcing copyright, even though they signed the Berne Convention. Um, and the World Intellectual Property Organization um, has extended the copyright protections as they relate to uh, new technologies. So thanks for listening. 
and I will see you online.